Hello and welcome to St. Matthew Lutheran Church of Milwaukee. This is the service for January 29th, 2023, the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany of our Lord. Our opening hymn is Awake, O Sleeper, Rise and See. is revealed. Praise and thanks to God. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. to him with songs of praise. 
our first scripture reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah, selected verses from chapters 2 and 3. These verses are the text for our sermon, which has the theme, Humility Triumphs. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the land, you who do what he can. Seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you will be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. On that day, you, Jerusalem, will not be put to shame for all the wrongs you have done to me, because I will remove from you your arrogant boasters. Never again will you be haughty on my holy hill, but I will leave within you the meek and humble. The remnant of Israel will trust in the name of the Lord. They will do no wrong, they will tell no lies. A deceitful tongue will not be found in their mouths. They will eat and lie down, and no one will make them afraid. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing Psalm. like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither whatever they do prospers blessed are they So the wicked, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. over the way of the righteous. But the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning Our second reading is from the Apostle Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, beginning at verse 26. 
Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were alive. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the lowly things of this world and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel is recorded by St. Matthew in chapter 5, the first 12 verses. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We sing, Seek where you may to find a way. Restore you the 
Grace, mercy, and peace are in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Dear fellow redeemed in Christ Jesus, when we hear of championship teams and athletes and award-winning actors and virtuoso musicians, we do not usually hear their humility being celebrated. In fact, more likely their confidence or perhaps even their cockiness is celebrated. The tough championship team may swagger around saying, we are underdogs to no one. The critics might applaud the performer saying, she's up there and she owns the stage. A player is called the king of the court. Even in our state high school championships, where throughout the year a big emphasis is placed on sportsmanship, they blare the anthem when someone wins it all, we are the champions, no time for losers, because we are the champions. If a competitor or singer, or performer spends too much time thinking, I'm not good enough. I don't really belong on this court or on this stage. They're not likely to achieve much. They're not likely to triumph in their field. But through the prophet Zephaniah, and as well, through the words we heard from the Apostle Paul and our Lord Jesus himself today, God tells us that humility does indeed triumph. Maybe not in these other areas, but in the areas where it matters most, humility triumphs. It preserves us from extinction, and it makes us people of distinction. God sometimes calls his faithful prophets seers. We sing that in one of our hymns. Isaiah, mighty seer in days of old. People who are seeing things in the future that others may not yet see. God sees them, of course, and he gives the vision to the prophet to also see it and to describe it. And just as a Driver on the western highways of our country may see one mountain range, maybe only a mile or two off, and then another one, 20, 30 miles in the distance at the same time. We're often seeing two events in the future, one pretty close, one way, way off in the future. Zephaniah was such a seer. Right before these verses, he's warning about the day of the Lord's wrath. And he was seeing two things. He was seeing the old story in the Old Testament of God sending another nation to punish Israel, to teach them a lesson, to bring them to their knees to, so that they would turn back to their God. That day of wrath when the Lord would allow a lot of destruction among his people. But he was also seeing the day of wrath, of anger, of judgment, the last day, when everything will be consumed with fire. Zephaniah was appealing to God's people to repent and be saved from extinction, from being wiped out on both of those days the one that would be coming with a foreign army, the one that would be coming on the last day. When an animal species goes extinct, it means they are no more. They, they won't be here on earth anymore. We think of the dinosaurs, the, the passenger pigeon, and so on. They just are not around anymore. And Zephaniah says that's the way it will be for different enemies of God, for the arrogant boasters, for those who are haughty, 
Haughty is not really an everyday word, but it means a spirit of looking down on others with disdain, maybe even contempt. Looking down on God's Word and His message with contempt, with annoyance. Why is He bothering to say that to me? Who is He to say that to me? Zephaniah warns that those with deceitful tongues will become extinct. They will be wiped out. It was not going to be pretty when an invading army laid waste to the unrepentant sinners, just as it will not be pretty on the last day. Well, who would be spared? Who would ultimately win? Who would triumph? The meek and the humble those who would bow down before the Lord and confess their sins, confess their unworthiness, confess their failure and inability to follow God's holy law. Confess, Lord, I am nothing. You are everything. Zephaniah highlights what is a surprise what is surprising about the humble triumphing. He's saying the person who bows down on the ground before the king is the one who's going to win. We realize what a vulnerable position that puts someone in to be on the ground with their head down. Anyone comes after them, they don't even see what's coming. They're at the low point. The person, the enemies above them can strike them down. That person's not going to triumph, we think. That person's probably already defeated, we think. But Zephaniah reminds us, no, the one who bows down before the king of kings is the one who triumphs because of that king's mercy. And the result of that triumph is he is the one who will eat and lie down and no one will make him afraid. The people of God who humbly come before him and ask him for mercy, they are the ones who, after bowing down, will lie down and enjoy things without fear. Zephaniah gives us one of the many pictures that God gives us of heaven being a heavenly feast. These pictures bring to mind the classic description of God's law and God's gospel. This classic description says that the law afflicts the comfortable, those who are not humble, but are very comfortable with how good they are, feeling pretty good about themselves, the law strikes down their pride, reminds them they are not righteous, that they have fallen short. And God hopes that that message brings them to their knees, brings them to bow down before him and ask for mercy as they recognize that they do not have a righteousness of their own. God hopes that his law afflicts the comfortable, makes them uncomfortable and afflicted. Then comes God's gospel, the good news, the gospel which comforts the afflicted. With this comforting picture of being able to lie down, relax, and enjoy a feast, nothing to fear because our enemies are defeated. This is a picture God gives us of the eternal joys of heaven. And it's right after these verses where Zephaniah records that remarkable description of God's grace. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. The almighty, eternal, holy God who hates sin will delight in you, 
a sinner because he has taken away your sin. We think of the description of what happened on the cross of Calvary. God treated his own holy son as he did not deserve so that he could treat us as we do not deserve. We do not deserve the joys of heaven. We disappointed and still disappoint our God in different ways, but in his mercy he forgives us and he even rejoices over us with singing. He, just, he doesn't simply say, okay, they can be part of my kingdom, I guess. He says, no, I'm thrilled that you are part of my kingdom. Such is his grace. You know, at the moment in this country, we apparently do not have to be concerned about an invading army coming and making us extinct from this land of the living on earth and snuffing us out. But it is to always be our concern that the flame of faith is not snuffed out, that it is not extinguished because that makes us spiritually extinct. Then we have no more life. Our faith continues to burn in our hearts when it still has the oxygen of God's Word, the oxygen of His sacraments, feeding that flame, keeping it glowing. You know, falling from faith could well be described as losing humility. Faith is humble. Faith is in awe of God's love for us lowly sinners. Faith knows we have no chance on our own. But falling away from faith could be described in this way. Lord, I'm becoming less and less impressed with what you have done for me. And frankly, I'm becoming a little more confident that I can just go through this life and on through what comes after that on my own. I'm getting pretty impressed with myself, less impressed with you. May God keep that attitude away from our hearts so the flame of our faith continues to glow brightly so that we say with Peter, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Humility triumphs when we correctly see that Jesus is our only hope of life everlasting. Humility triumphs as it makes us people of distinction. I'm not an expert in dealing with law enforcement officers, but I do think it's safe to say that if we are pulled over for some possible violation, it's not a good idea to say to the officer, do you know who I am? The officer doesn't want to hear that. We're not likely to win their favor in that way by seeking to claim that do you see my name? Do you, I've made such a name for myself that you're going to feel badly about pulling me over at all. That you need to think twice about ticketing or arresting me because of our great caliber and distinction. Now, of course, that's no way to approach the Lord either, to suggest that because of who we are, the reputation we have earned in the eyes of people, that he should be impressed with us. No, the faithful, humble people of God do not seek recognition for their name, but for the Lord's name. Zephaniah said the remnant of Israel, those remaining few faithful believers, they will trust in the name of the Lord. They will celebrate the name of the Lord. They will know that is the only name by which we may be saved, the only name to claim in God's court 
as one that will give us special treatment. Faithful, humble believers will not claim some special distinction because of our family line or earthly wealth or achievements. They'll find their status and their prestige, their honor, their distinction in the name of the Lord. And this will lead them to live in a distinct way, distinct from the unbelieving people of this world. In this way, we become people of distinction. And just as God's prophets, the seers, were often seen two things at once, we spoke of the anger and judgment soon to come and the judgment day down the road. Zephaniah is seen two things as he talks about how God's people are going to live distinct from the world. When he speaks of how they will do no wrong, they will tell no lies, a deceitful tongue will not be found in their mouths. Zephaniah's seen two things. We heard perfection in those words. They will do no wrong. They will tell no lies. No one will make them afraid. What Zephaniah is seeing there is the heavenly Jerusalem, where we become perfect as the Lord himself is perfect, as the angels in heaven are perfect, where we truly will do no wrong, tell no lies, and so on. Zephaniah is seeing that heavenly Jerusalem, but, but at the same time he's seen the earthly Jerusalem, the church now. And he knows, as we know, that it is not possible for us to do no wrong, but God calls on us through him to live in a way different from the people of the world. One of our Bible translations speaks of how God has called us to be a peculiar people, distinguished from others in some way because we are not nearly as likely to do wrong because we will seek to avoid all lies and we will seek to live in a way that indicates we are not afraid. We are not afraid from, of whatever this world may throw at us because we have the Lord, our refuge and strength. We have a Savior who was put to death on the cross, but who rose from the grave and tells us for that reason, we do not have to be afraid of the grave either. A Savior who reminds us to ask this question, what can man do to me? What can anyone on this earth or anything on this earth do to me that will harm me eternally? The answer is nothing. Living with an attitude like that makes us people of distinction. And when at the end of our lives, and especially on the last day of judgment, we know that our plea before our maker will not and cannot be, do you know who I am? I did this, I did that, I never did this, I almost never did that. No, our plea can only be and will be, I know who you are. You are the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God. I am nothing. You are everything. And humility triumphs on through eternity. Amen. We continue singing, we praise you, O God. Praise you. 
the noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your glorious truth. when I call, O Lord, be merciful and answer me. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O Christ, who in great love kept your promise and came to give your life a ransom for sinners, look with patience on us and do not be swift to throw us aside. Lord, may we ever desire to show our faith and prove our love by keeping your commandments and refusing to yield to temptation. Make the new creation in us strong through the power of the Holy Spirit so that we may be victorious over sin that wants to rule our flesh. Help us overcome these temptations. Almighty and everlasting God, look with mercy on our weaknesses and in all our dangers and needs, stretch out the right hand of your majesty to help and defend us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. 
We close with blessed are they. Yours 
is his the kingdom shall for all to see rejoice and be glad blessed are you Rejoice and be glad. Yours is the kingdom of God. If we do not pause, to hear God speak to us through his word, we do not hear that message to rejoice because ours is the kingdom of God. We look forward to having you join us again and again on these recorded broadcasts. We also hope to see you in person today at St. Matthew Lutheran Church, 8444 West Melvina Street in Milwaukee. Sunday services are at 9 a.m., Monday evening at 6.30. God be with you until we meet again.